This is Social Confidential, where Adweek social media editors take a look behind the logo to find out who's tweeting and sharing for major brands. I'm Jess Seferis, and I'm here with Nathan Allabach, who has drawn global attention for the surprisingly deep and introspective discussions he shares via the Twitter account of frozen meat brand Steakum. So Nathan, what initially prompted your conversational and not entirely meat focused approach. We've always just tried to figure out, you know, what's missing from the conversation. You know, how can we insert ourselves in a way that's offering people something while also kind of like lowering the temperature of a polarization and outrage and just a lot of the stuff that stresses people out on a day-to-day -day basis. We're trying to be the, the frozen meat solution, I guess, to people's problems in some weird uh, propaganda sense. <laughs> what inspired the anecdotes are not data thread? There was no one moment that inspired it in the news or anything like that. It was more a culmination of observations that have been going on. When I was writing that, it didn't really seem like that huge of a thing, but I think the fact that it came from a frozen meat brand just kind of, it, it struck a chord. On that note, in one tweet you wrote, people think it's bizarre, ironic, and funny when a frozen meat company points out the importance of critical thinking, but chances are the same message would never go viral if it was just from a person. Do you think brands have a responsibility to use their social platforms for more than just marketing, but for the larger good as well? I don't know if I would use the word responsibility. The, the point of that message was just was obviously very meta, and I'm just trying to like self-actualize, you know, the fact that as a frozen meat company, everything we're saying, you know, we still have a bottom line, and that's essentially what all of our marketing is geared toward. You know, it's, we're trying to generate sales and generate brand awareness. You could say that brands have a responsibility to do good, but at the same time, I think those lines get really blurry as far as, you know, what good a brand can do and how much of that is ultimately self-serving. So if you had one piece of advice for other social media managers, what would you tell them? Pay attention to culture, being able to check for trends, follow, you know, influencers, follow various sources uh, between politics and art and comedy. Um, just have like a good grasp on what's going on in the world at a given point because that speaks to the work that you produce it's a lot more clear and a lot more current and relevant than it would if you were just following you know marketing circles or just some kind of like uh, esoteric groups that aren't totally relevant to, to what you do so follow culture and um and let that influence your work do you have an idea of to what extent the activity on twitter translates to sales of the product all indicators point to that every time we've had a viral spike, uh, sales have followed that. Since we started going viral on Twitter in early 2018, we haven't ran many, if any, other traditional ads. If it's not from like a, a natural economic phenomenon, we can trace it back to, uh, to Twitter work. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciated it. You were one of the first people I thought of when we came up with this idea and I knew I wanted to talk to you. Really appreciate it. It's a, it's a, it's a cool community and uh, honored to be part of it. I'm Jess Ferris. See you next time on Adweek's Social Confidential.